CompTIA A+, Core 2, Complete Training Course. Exam Objective 3.3, Given a Scenario, Use Best Practice Procedures for Malware Removal. When it comes to malware removal, a systematic approach is key. Think of it like solving a mystery. First, gather clues, then isolate the suspect, clean up the scene, and finally, set up defenses to prevent future crime. Similarly, following a step-by-step -step approach for malware removal can save time, stress, and a lot of headaches for everyone involved. For this topic, you will find that CompTIA has broken the malware removal process into seven distinct steps. Step 1. Investigate and verify malware symptoms. Step 2. Quarantine infected systems. Step 3. Disable system restore in Windows. Step 4. Remediate infected systems. Step 5. Schedule scans and run updates. Step 6. Enable system restore and create a restore point in Windows. And Step 7. Educate the end user. The first step is where you get to play detective and investigate the malware symptoms. If your computer suddenly develops a fascination with strange pop-ups, or experiences slowdowns, mysterious changes in settings, or starts behaving like it's possessed, you may have malware. By putting on your detective's hat and investigating these symptoms, you should be able to confirm if malware is to blame, or if a recent update is just having a bad day. Once you've verified malware is present, it's time to quarantine the infected system. This involves disconnecting the device from the network, whether Wi-Fi or Ethernet, to prevent the malware from reaching out to other systems or calling in reinforcements from the internet. Think of it like putting the infected system in a bubble. No emails, no messages, just the device on its own while you prepare to clean up. If you are unable to quarantine the device, consider powering it off while it awaits remediation. Before diving into remediation on a Windows device, it's important to take an extra step and disable the system restore feature. This step might seem counterintuitive, but it stops the computer from backing up the infection. Picture going through all the trouble of deep cleaning a room only for someone to hit a restore button, bringing all the mess right back. Turning off system restore ensures that Windows won't accidentally reintroduce malware after the system is cleaned, preventing an unintentional reversal of all your hard work. With system restore disabled, it's time to remediate the infected system. Start by ensuring that your anti-malware software and definitions are up to date. Once ready, run a thorough system scan to locate and remove any threats. During this step, it can be helpful to review event logs for any suspicious activity or clues about how the malware has been behaving. For particularly stubborn infections, booting into safe mode can give you an advantage. Safe mode only loads essential services, disabling most malware. This makes it easier to find and remove. After the system is cleaned, it's wise to schedule regular scans and enable automatic updates. Setting up these automated defenses ensures that the computer receives regular checkups and stays up to date on security patches. This proactive approach strengthens the system's security, making it less likely that future malware will slip through the cracks. With the cleanup complete and future scans and updates scheduled, the next step for Windows-specific devices is to re-enable System Restore and create a fresh, malware-free restore point. This restore point acts as a clean snapshot of the system, so if anything goes wrong later, you can quickly roll back to a safe, malware-free state. Finally, as a last step, take some time to educate the end user. A little bit of guidance can go a long way in preventing future infections. Explain the importance of avoiding suspicious links, strange pop-ups, and unverified downloads. By sharing practical advice, like using strong passwords and steering clear of risky sites, users become more aware of the risks and are less likely to unintentionally introduce malware again. If I can say one thing about this topic, it would be to commit these malware removal steps to memory, in the exact order they were presented. By following these steps, you're not only removing the malware, but also setting up the system and its users for future success. This systematic approach tackles the problem of malware effectively while also reinforcing defenses. And if that is not reason enough, 
You should also know that CompTIA loves to ask questions about each of these steps on their A-plus Core 2 certification exam. So why not be prepared? Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more great content.